This is a gospel tract, as we call it. The gospel, of course, is the good news that God has revealed, and we have it in written form in the Bible, in his holy and divine word. A gospel tract, a tract is a leaflet uh, designed to propagate, to inform people of some particular aspect of that good news, that gospel message. This is one of those tracts and it's designed to help people, to encourage them to seek the Lord while he may be found, uh, to read the, the Bible, the scriptures for themselves. If you haven't got one, then um, do let me know, gladly send you one. But this uh, tract, this gospel tract, this gospel good news leaflet is entitled Self Despair. And then the subtitle is The Hope of Eternal Life. The Courage of Honesty, of course, the tract begins, is required as necessary in order for a person to come to that place of seeking the Lord while he may be found. The, ne the necessary confession uh, this is taken from our baptism formula of the Reformed faith. And it declares that we with our children are conceived and born in sin and therefore are children of wrath. Contrary that is to the delusion of the world today that in all men lies a seed of goodness just waiting to spring forth. Contrary to this, the Bible, God says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and verse 12. God alone is good. That is the testimony of Scripture, of God's holy word. The Bible, God reveals himself in it and of course our true selves also a knowledge of ourselves that in the entirety of our being lies a hellish condition it is god in the bible who alone gives us an honest diagnosis of the root of man's desperate plight the ungodly origin and condition of our natural life that we and our children are conceived and born in sin and therefore children of wrath but it takes courage honesty to make that confession it takes courage to unwrap the world's unfanciful notions the tract says of both the cradle and the grave in order to get to the truth and expose the bleeding soul with its multiplicity of filthy wounds that cause the human despair. And that leads, of course, to all kinds of other problems. Plasters are of no avail. If somebody has terminal cancer, a tumour uh, within them that's killing them, a plaster is of no good heart surgery is what's required plasters are of no avail when you're looking into a grave full of skeletons and dry bones reality i know it's not what we're used to we're civilized or that's what we claim you know so to be thinking never mind speaking of ourselves as the sweet psalmist of Israel does in Holy Scripture of his foul, stinking abscesses does not sit well with us. And especially so in this modern, contemporary generation. It takes courage, the courage of honesty. We tend rather, the track goes on to say, to skip over the terrifying truth, to put a coat of paint on it some bling, make it sparkle, you know, make it look brighter. 
some positive thinking, you know, shun the pessimistic. We don't want to be reading stuff like this. But we're still, at the end of the day, we're still the same vagabonds, cast out of the heavenly kingdom, separated from God by our iniquity. The stains, the unclean remains, which without the blood of the cross cannot be wiped away. So God instructs us to loathe ourselves, to humble ourselves, to seek salvation outside of ourselves, to have the latter salvation, that is. We must begin with the first, loathing and humbling ourselves. But of course, it's, um, it's nothing more than selfishness and wounded pride, you know, when people say, that they detest themselves, that they loathe themselves. It doesn't speak of their wickedness. It doesn't speak of the honesty that God requires in order for us to be brought to, to come to God's salvation. No, the pessimism of this generation at its root is egoism. I me, I, is the central letter of the word sin, I, I, E, I, is, is our egos, is the very essence of sin, selfishness. Indeed, the desire and intent to commit suicide is at its core still self-love. The loathing to which God admonishes us is to consider soberly our natural condition. And it is always much, much worse than we ever imagined it to be. Job, in the Old Testament, chapter 42, verse 6 says, I abhor myself. Oh, this is gold, rarer than gold. King David, King David, the king of Israel says, I will be sorry for my sins, Psalm 38, verse 18. The Apostle Paul, a Christian, for some 30 years says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. It's from this self-loathing comes humility. Worldly loathing, a loathing, detesting a oneself, the worldly loathing, leads to pride. Only spiritual loathing leads to humility. The pessimism of the world leads to despair and then to suicide, which is, which is, I tell you, at epi epidemic levels in our Western, modern, contemporary, scientific, technological age and society today. Just like Judas Iscariot of old. Godly pessimism leads to a seeking for salvation, but it takes honesty. It takes courage. The courage of honesty. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Psalm 33, verse 24. To seek cleansing and salvation outside of ourselves because it's not to be found in ourselves because we are all members of the self-preservation society that's a that's that's a god created instinct i mean if you go to a doctor for a bodily need then why not to uh, likewise for your soul if a villain may apply to the king for mercy well, why not you to the heavenly king? But the seeking here is not a sick person wanting a doctor or a criminal wanting mercy from the king. It's a sinner who has offended God. It's a transgressor who has trashed the royal law. It's a person with the grit, the guts, the courage, the honesty to confess that we and our children are conceived and born in sin and therefore children of wrath. It's the 
prodigal son or daughter seeking to be reconciled to their father. But seeking where? Outside of themselves, there is a massive chasm that opens up before our eyes. The gulf between the world and God. The world turns inward, looking to mend itself, seeking to purify itself. Why? Because it knows nothing else. Nothing but itself and seeks only to exalt itself. If it were not so foolish, astonishingly ridiculous, this would be laughable. It's akin to seeking to pulling yourselves up by the bootlaces. We look into ourselves and all we see is just more despair. Nothing but the blackness and darkness of sin, that's all. It is humbly seeking for help, deliverance from a source outside of yourself. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, says Jesus, Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek and ye shall find, Matthew 7, verse 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Isaiah 55, verse 6. For deliverance, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, Joel chapter 2, verse 32. But you look around questioningly, prayerfully, even where, who, it comes to him who seeks cleansing and forgiveness of their sins through Jesus Christ. He is the one. It's not your sighing, it's not your crying, it's not our praying, it's God working, remember, from outside of ourselves, from above, not from inside. Looking away heavenward, he must come down to us. He must perform this miracle, for that's what it takes. A miracle. Its source is found in his amazing, sovereign, free, particular grace. All we have is our self-loathing, sorrowful humbling. That would be our case for all eternity. Unless God, by his sovereign, irresistible hand, pulls us out of it. He who calls things that are not as if they were. He who spoke and brought a universe into being. He who speaks and the dead rise. He who speaks and deliverance comes to a miserable sinner conceived and born in sin. So deliverance, the tract goes on to speak of, the pit of misery is deep. God's promises of salvation are like a golden chain. It stretches from eternity to eternity and hangs down in this earth sphere. And a humble sinner has to but catch just one link of the chain to be saved. Just as the drowning man has to but grab just one part of the lifeline, he doesn't have to grab it all, just one part of it, in order to be pulled from the danger. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mark 9.23 says Jesus. There you go. Grab the lifeline. Grab hold of that link. Or believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And thy house, Acts chapter 16, verse 31, stalk him, troll him, pursue him, say to him, you promised. Salvation, deliverance. And what is it that is promised? Deliverance, salvation, the washing away of sins. Let me turn you to a passage in the Bible that is so very, very important, I think, at least anyway. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, where the Lord speaks about all kinds of sinners. The, the list is by no means exhaustive. Know ye not, you ought to know, 
and this is why God has caused it to be written so that we would know, be informed. Know ye not that the unrighteous, those conceived and born in sin, and therefore children of wrath, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? They cannot. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, that's homosexuals, that's sodomites and lesbians. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. And remember, the, the, this list is not, not exhaustive. Uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. But here, here is where the hope lies. Listen, this is how it finishes. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You see, there is hope for all these different stripes of sinners who, who call upon the name of the Lord, who seek him with all their hearts, soul, strength and mind. All kinds of sinners, but they were washed. They were justified. Jesus Christ, the only savior, delivered them. Sin is a law is a long, frightful list of charges that lie against us all. The list has no end. The washing away of sins is the wiping out of everything that stands against us that God has against us. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. The Apostle Paul says in Colossians 2 verse 14, speaking to Christians of their sins having been dealt with, washed away. The washing requires blood, human blood. The nature that sinned must pay the price, must bear the punishment. Jesus Christ did that for sinners. The blood of a righteous man, the only righteous man that ever walked the face of this earth, Jesus Christ. This blood, Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, shed for sinners. His blood flowed down from the cross. It is the very blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses us and delivers us from sin. So I ask you, what hinders you? Go to him right now. Listen further to God's word. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Isaiah 55 verses 6 and 7. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered, Joel chapter 2, verse 32. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, Acts chapter 2, verse 39. And finally, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. So you see, there's no need for self-despair. There is the hope of eternal life. But it is in Jesus Christ and in him alone. There is none other name under heaven. Whereby we, you, must be saved. Call upon his name today. You haven't got a Bible, you would like one, then write to me, communicate with me and I will gladly send you one. Call 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 